Handrails can be simple as far as installation is concerned, but as an inspector, it's one of the most um, highly called corrections that I deal with when it comes to decks or stairs or anything revolving handrail and or guardrail. Um, but for today, I wanted to just touch base on some of those requirements for handrail. So if you're out there building the deck, you're building an addition, you're putting steps in your shop or something like that, you just know when to install handrail and some of the, some of the things to think about and some stuff that should get you over the hump and keep you moving. Um, so first off, handrail has to be grippable. It can't be a two by four turned sideways or the top cap of your rail for a guardrail. It's got to be grippable and they're all different types and sizes of approved get grippable handrail. I will actually, at the end of this video, I'll do a snapshot of this um, template that I have that just might give you an idea what to think about. Most people just use kind of the round, uh, you know, like closet rod style material for their handrail. Um, you can use other stuff. Um, you, can, you can use like a grooved two by six. I've seen uh, like a two by six cedar that's grooved on one end that you could use as, um, as a handrail. Um, but just keep in mind that it can't just be a flat two by four, right? It's gotta be grippable. So uh, let's take a look at the handrail. I'm here in a new house on a set of stairs and I just thought I would run over this, uh, this handrail with you so you have an idea what to think about. So let's take a look. So we have this set of stairs right here and we've got a handrail going up right here, okay? So for any instance, whether or not it's a deck, whether or not it's in a house, if you have four or more risers, you need to have handrail, okay? So that a riser is up and down. So if I'm down here at the bottom, I got one, two, three, four. After that, after I hit this fourth one, then I have to install handrail. So like in a garage or something like that where you only have a couple steps, you don't need handrail. It's just when you get to that fourth riser, you do. And then as far as height above the stairs, the requirement is 34 to 38 inches above the stair nose. And so if you go down here and we're looking at stairs, stair nose is this right here, right? It's the front. So if I was to go right here at any point along these stairs and I measure up say 34 or 36 or 38 to the top, as long as I'm within 34 to 38 to the top, I'm good. So the same thing, I would go up there to the top, I'd measure whatever my number is, say 36, I'd come down here, measure 36, I've got my line, and that's where I'm gonna set my handrail. The other thing to think about is, is code requires inch and a half right here. But most brackets are gonna get you there, so that's not really something to worry about. Um, and then the big one, the one that we call all the time, is returning your handrail to the wall. Just this little L right here. A lot of older houses, they just come down and they end. Well, code is big now on making sure these get returned. I've heard a lot of reasons on why. Um, sometimes I've heard, you know, a purse strap or belts or something can get stuck on it. Um, but you want to make sure you, you return it at the top and at the bottom. Okay, so now I'm, I'm at the top of the stairs and I've, I've gone through, right, the height, right? So 34 to 38 to the top of your handrail needs to be grippable, has to return to the wall. You need that inch and a half um, separation from the wall or whatever it's attached to, so you have room to get your hand in there. Um, but you also have to run it from the top stair nose to the bottom stair nose. And sometimes that can be difficult. Usually you just do the best you can. As an inspector, you know, if the wall just ends, you're not just gonna shove a handrail out there two feet and have it hurt somebody or be a projection that, that doesn't work. So, um, you know, you might have to work with your building inspector a little bit, your local building inspector if you're building one. But for myself, it's, you know, can someone easily grab it? Can somebody easily use it? So let's look here at this one. I'm at the top looking down now so you can get a shot of it. And I'll show you kind of how it runs all the way to the top. So you can see here now we're at the top of the stairs. So same thing, you can see it comes up returns to the wall like it's supposed to, and it is right above the top step. Same at the bottom, runs all the way to the very end. 
And the goal of that is so that nobody has to take their hand off of it once they start walking down the stairs. A few other things to think about is, is um, you know, I said four or more risers, you need handrail. Well, once you get to a landing, so a three by three landing or three feet deep by the width of your stairs, if you have four foot wide stairs, it'd be a four foot by three foot landing. Once you get to a landing, it starts over. And so let's just say you have three step or three risers and then a landing and then three risers and then a landing. Well, you don't have four or more risers. So you do not need to install handrail. So just keep that in mind as well, depending on how your stairs lay out. Um, you may only need to do like one run of handrail on one side and then it goes to a landing with like two steps. You do not have to put a handrail on that lower side with only three or less risers. Uh, hopefully that makes sense for you. It's not too confusing. Um, if you do have like winder stairs, right? You don't have a full landing, then technically you would have to carry that handrail all the way around. And you have to keep that 34 to 38 on your height for your handrail to the top. And so sometimes that can get difficult if the stairs are not equal. You might have to do some kind of funky things to make sure that it is all continuous. Because the idea is, is that once you grab onto it, you do not have to let go of it until you get to a landing or to the bottom of the stairs, which then again is kind of considered a landing. Um, and that way everybody's safe. They wouldn't have to let go and then grab it again. So you don't want to have any breaks by a newel post or anything like that. It's got to be continuous. So as you work through that, if you have any more questions, you know, hit subscribe for more. Uh, check out buildingcodetips.com for more information. The goal is always just to help out homeowners and DIYers get through their projects, get it done right the first time. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, my name is Ben with Building Code Tips, and, uh, and we'll see you on the next video.